Good day ladies and gentlemen. My name is Subramaniam Maslamani. I am a Tamil. Today my topic is the LLRC Commission Report. Sri Lanka calls it Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission. I call it Lamentable, Laughable and Regrettable Commission. We can also call it Lesser Learned Rajabaksa Commission. Some people like to call it Learned Lackey's Remorse Commission. Simply it is Rajapaksa's report to whitewash war crimes. The Sri Lankan single is Do It So Well, The Art of Deception. The LLRC report released yesterday summarized the Sri Lankan dichotomy in one simple single commission. The Sri Lankan struggle is not about race and religion. It is about the fundamental respect to morality and universality of human nature. One community thinks of the right path and the other community thinks any path is okay as long as we get through the day. There is no mention of human life, human rights and human sufferings in this report or in their minds. How can they? They are mindless people. Got it? world leaders, do whatever you want to do with this report, but we survived the worst world war by 20 nations, 3 billion people and some of the most deadly weapons. Bring it on if you got any more. Uh, bring it on superpowers that supported the senseless Sri Lankan savages. Now Rajapaksa is talking about forgiveness. Amazing, isn't it? Two years ago, we were terrorists. Now we are innocent and decent citizens. Anything that suits you, Mr. Rajapaksa, anything that suits you, mindless maniac, we don't need your apology. And we are not ready to forgive. Bring back our loved ones to life if you can. Mr. Rajapaksa, on 18th May 2009 was the turning point for Tamils. There is no looking back. It's a new era for Tamils. We don't need anything from you. We got a lot of work to do, not only in Sri Lanka, but all over South Asia. Mind Rajapaksa triumphs again in his twisted manipulation of the educated minds of Sri Lanka. He has hired seven learned people and made and made lackeys out of them. He does it so well that we have to question the school curriculum and add the dark side of human mind to it so that the future generations live with care and reservations. The deepest question in my mind is, am I one of those human beings who behave so inhumanly, so unconsciously and so nastily? How can we be so bad to our own kind. How can man be so brutal, so uncaring and kill people? And then the other people set out to justify and safeguard them and to find them not guilty 
and set them free. It is unconceivable that we humans can go so far back down in evolution and be lower than the lowest of the living forms. It's a shame. We have so many thousand so powerful and lethal weapons but we could not have the guts to go in and take out one tyrant out of existence. And that tyrant still, around, still runs around in Sri Lanka like a Tasmanian devil. Sad indeed. It appears as though well the Sri Lankan people and especially the president and his clans have been to a different school of ethics on planet Earth. They appear to have a different set of values and yardsticks such as human life is easily disposable without any deliberations, etc. Yet they seek approval from the rest of the moral world. Quite weird and quite unusual, isn't it? When a nation of people are confusing civil liberty with civil tranquility, they have lost their sense of direction and they are mere subjects, not citizens. That is what Rajapaksa wants and that is what the people got. If you think Tamils lost a small battle, at least they have realized it. Wait till the others find out what is in store for them. Now they are in a hallucinatory mood. Wait till the mojo runs down. Mind the Rajapaksa himself does not know that he does not know how to lead a society he wants to manage, that we want to empower. To give away power is the power of a powerful person. To give away power is the power of a powerful person. One remains powerful by having no power except reverence and respect. God is invisible, yet he is powerful through reverence and respect. The power has diffused into the greater conscience. You feel it when you step into, a, into, a, into its realm. You feel it in churches. You feel it in temples. You feel it in mosques. You feel it in synagogues, you feel it in the chamber of justice, and sometimes you feel it in certain people. Why do people and nations waste their God-given life in totally unwanted, unnecessary, and undefendable act of inhumanness? Steve Jobs, the late chairman of Apple Computer Corporation said, Knowing that one day I will be dead is the biggest motivation for me to live every moment of my life usefully and creatively. When a man has that kind of belief, no wonder he is going to be one of the greatest. More than that, I give credit to those who created the American Constitution and the mindset that promotes freedom and freedom for creativity. It is very sad indeed to see 20 million people in Sri Lanka for 60 years were led in a path of self-destruction. Each one of them could have been either a Bill Gates or a Steve Jobs. Sad indeed. This LLRC commission was created to continue that path of self-destruction. It was created to pull wool over, wool over our eyes and make stif, stupid, stupid out of the whole world and to continue their path to the dungeon. The members of the commission did not perform their duty as told by the creator, but as told by the criminal. Sad indeed, educated and elderly people have to behave so inhumanly. But having lived a life so far, 
I know justice will never be denied. That is my only consolation. Man cannot be a judge, a justice, justifiable and justified. Seeking justice from mankind is a false sense of hope and faith. I shall leave justice to the Creator. That is Tamil culture. We do not seek justice or redemption from any human being or anyone. We did not ask Mahindraja Vatsa for an inquiry or for the LLRC. We did not set out to punish anyone. We cannot. For man cannot be his own judge, however much he may have been emancipated. We accept the verdict of the Creator and we have the capacity to judge our behavior and we have the capacity to correct ourselves. And when something happens to us and if we cannot be our own judges, we accept the verdict of the Creator. That is why I want to be a Tamil. That is why I am a Tamil. And that is why I am proud to be a Tamil. There is no other way to life. There is no other culture like it. If we survive the year 2009, 20 nation and 2 billion people army and modern weaponry, we can survive any holocaust. If you have any moral strength and untested new weapons, bring it on savages, bring it on. It was a war between morality and mindlessness. It is not over. It has just begun. The LLRC commission was set up by the criminals, no, I'm sorry, LRRC commission was made up of the criminals, by the criminals, for the criminals to whitewash their war crimes and war against humanity. This commission was part of a grand plan formulated by the Sri Lankan government along with the other parties to the war. Even before the beginning of the hostilities, but to believe that it was appointed as a result of the war is naivety and wrong. It was part of a propaganda aspect of the war. It was supposed to be a Biafra style massacre, soon to be forgotten, but unexpectedly something went wrong. That something was the diaspora Tamil factor. Now they have pumpkins to bury, but do not have much right to do so. The Sri Lankan religious establishment hires criminals to run the government to drive out Tamils from Sri Lanka. It was, is and always will be the way till the last of the Tamils are either killed or driven out of the country. Both India and Sri Lanka share the same sentiment. Some foolish among my community of Tamils believe otherwise. To some of us who happen to be Tamils by birth and by the language we speak and the domain we were born, we were called Tamils. But we are human like, humans like anyone else. Through years of living in deprived land of water, soil and climate, we have developed a distinct way of living. This way, this way of the culture, as we call it, is incompatible with the southern psyche. I, go, I guess God has a separate plan for us. That may be the reasons why most of us end up in nations that are very wealthy in very many ways. Thank you God, the Almighty. I do not know if he knows or not, Mahindra Rajapaksa is the prime suspect in the 2009 Sri Lankan war crimes investigation. I hope he knows it now, if he didn't know it before. 
There are so many things he does not know. Such as Dominta Silva was a drug dealer. And his son Namal is a high profile pimp. Yes, sir. Sir, you can take your LLRC report and shove it right up where it belongs. It is pulling wool over our eyes and send the rest of the world on wild goose chase and ridiculing of the world of people. Mind the Rajwal sir needed some time to bury all the physical evidences in the zone of war crimes and genocide under the pretext of demining while demeaning the decent society and deceiving the diplomats. Right. He thinks in the last three years he was able to obliterate all the evidences. Let him think that way. The LLRC report is out and as usual Mind Raja Paksa has declined responsibility, which is typical of criminals. Criminals are not going to come forth forthright and say we did kill people. It is for the victim or the plaintiff to prove to prove the case. He treats this genocide like a court case drama. Folks, remember that in a legal case, it is an external investigation outside the realm of moral justice. Moral justice has little to do with courtroom drama. And in a courtroom, as long as you are legally right, you are innocent, free and clear. Actually speaking, the legal system favors the accused and the accused has the right to remain silent and not to take the witness stand to favor him for it may go against him. Whereas the moral society knows it by all, knows it all by feelings, hunches, etc. It's a non-verbal deliberation in the plasma of universal law. The king may err, but the god never. So they have put out the LLRC report, claiming that they did not harm any, harm anyone. It is for us to prove it. But the world knows otherwise. Mahindra Rajabaksa is vainly trying to exonerate him and his clan. He may escape man-made justice, but will not escape moral justice. People were killed indiscriminately in thousands and by thousands the people are still being abused physically, morally and psychologically. And he pretends not knowing anything. Somewhere there must be justice for all these crimes and sufferings. Who are the criminals? The front of the criminals are the Rajapaksas and politicians. Who are the real criminals? One has to go deep into the psyche of the conscience of the Sri Lankan culture. I mean the Mahavamsa. The Mahavamsa is the mission. The Mahasamta is the fanatical outfit. And the Mahanaikas are the fanatical criminals. From where comes all the orders? The mission is to drive all Tamils out of Sri Lanka. And whatever is left will be silent, subdued and subservient minority. Remember folks, in this Sri Lankan struggle, both India and Sri Lanka share this common agenda and common benefits. China may be an innocent victim of the grand larceny. China man is natively a man of business and needs only to be convinced that some new method is to his advantage. But the Hindu, the Indian Hindu, I mean, the Indian is a dreamer, remarkably lacking the business instinct and is so deeply imbued with ancient religious, racial and social social culture and it will be hard for him to rouse 
from his fatalistic theories in which the whole nature is steeped in. The Tamils are basically people of industry, frugality and Spartanism. They are progressive people and are willing to put in their effort to live peacefully and pragmatically. They instinctively know that life is after all a gifted endeavor and the minds are fitted with a horn of plenty. This summarizes the paradox of the Tamils. We are caught between and among tribes of fatalism. That is, Indians in the north and the Sinhalese in the south. The Sri Lankan conflict was a joint venture cooked up between Indians in the north and the Sinhalese in the south against the Tamils caught in between them. This, this struggle has been going on for a couple of thousand years. It will go on forever as long as we are humans with animal instinct. What we need in Asia is an Asian spring. If not, we will be left behind. The Arabians have realized it. Imagine South Asia being a breeding ground for menials. Menials. I can't imagine for a moment, but then there are educated, eminent people in India thinking otherwise. How can we break the backbone of the Indian fatalism that is in their minds? I am not boasting about the Tamils. We see the future very clearly, and we stand for we stand on the shoulders of the giants of philosophy. Let me repeat that. We see the future very clearly, for we Tamil stand on the shoulders of the giants of philosophy. We are a gift to South Asia, but they think otherwise. Singaporeans think Tamils are great people because Singaporeans are predominantly Chinese. They think with the rest of the world quite differently to the Indians. This is the background of the Sri Lankan conflict. For the present moment, if the Western powers do not intervene and bring about a regime change and a mind change in the whole region, this conflict, this conflict will explode to engulf the whole region. Indian, Pakistani and others do not have the depth of human nature to understand the nature of the conflict unfolding. I am proud to say that we Tamils have a road map for South Asia. The appointment of the LLRC Commission is a proof of the shallowness of the Sri Lankan mind. Who in the world will appoint a tribunal to investigate their own criminal action? Either that person is insane or intoxicated. The world knows, we know it, I know it, that the president of Sri Lanka, Mahindra Rajapaksa, his brother Gotabaya Rajapaksa and the commander Sarath Fonseca are the main and the most important players of the war. The war against humanity and the subsequent genocide. For Mahindra Rajapaksa to appoint his own commission to investigate him, looks little too naive on his part, isn't it? Will he, knowing that he is the one who gave the orders to kill people, turn the gun on him? Either he thinks the world is stupid, or he does not care, or he is extremely stupid. He got away with too many crimes, too many times. That is all to it. Will he get away this time? That is up to us. Looking at his background since the 1970s, yes, I mean 1970s, that was 40 years ago, there are several strange murders and disappearances in his province of Hamadot, Sri Lanka. There is common sense and a common census that he was in the midst of all of it. The opposition leader, Ranil Vikramasinghe, and John Amaradunga 
are the living example of his involvement in the murders of two politicians. Recently, Lasanda Vikramatunga and Pragit Agniligoda murders are suspected, suspected to be his orchestrations. These are disturbing inputs. But folks, rest assured that nothing will happen in this war crime investigation for India is part of it and they will ensure that it does not proceed any further. After all, Indians have some moral values and they are not going to let down their trustworthy servant Mahindra Rajapaksa. It was India's war that Sri Lanka fought. How can they forget it so easily? They will not. India will stand by them. LLRC and the Tamil perspective. LLRC for whom, for what and for why? After 60 years of racism, fanaticism, state terrorism and finally a well-planned massacre as depicted in the chronicle called Mahavamsa, they just want to whitewash, brush aside and continue the path of fanaticism. It is in their own interest this madness has to be stopped. The 2009 massacre is not the end of it. It became too obvious because of the diaspora Tamils. Biafra massacre in Africa was never made into an international issue. But the Mulli Vital massacre was made to become an issue because we, the diaspora, took up the issue with the international community and with the United Nations. Mahavamsa has to be stopped and they have to burn it now. When I mentioned the word Mahavamsa to a world-renowned human rights organization, they said they never heard of this plan of ethnic cleansing. There is no benefit to Tamils in this LLRC report. What we need is an investigation. Let me put it straight into the head of people. We want an investigation into the role played by Mahindra Rajapaksa, Kottabaya Rajapaksa and Sarath von Sirka. It is the Sri Lankan people who have to insist on it because their future depends on reclaiming their international image. And we Tamils will not keep silent either. We will within the laws of the land exercise our constitutional rights to ensure justice is upheld. For Sri Lankan Sinhalese, the trouble has just begun. If you want to live the way most communities live, you have to chart a different path and choose a different breed of leaders. This ethnocentric, race, religion based policies will not take you anywhere. A very simple suggestion, it took Jews 2500 years, but we had done miracles in 25 years. But this is, this is a mere beginning. If you have Mahabamsa as your roadmap, we do have one for you. Look at Middle East and learn fast. Numbers may give false and distinct advantage. But it does not ever give absolute advantage. It may in fact be disadvantage. In the Second World War, what the combined military of the Allied forces could not do in five years, one simple device did it overnight. The biggest problem in South Asia is not Sri Lanka, it is India. If Prabhakaran killed Rajiv Gandhi, and if Mahindra Rajavaksa killed Prabhakaran, why then are you holding innocent people for Rajiv Gandhi's murder? Innocent people's lives are like innocent soldiers in the front line. We see innocent people and innocent soldiers dying on the streets daily. 
why are they dying? Or precisely said, whom are they dying for? What I am trying to tell my Indian friends is justice works in strange ways and it works in strange it works in places dark and invisible and it crushes everyone on its way when the Indian people are when the Indian people are indifferent to the plight of the innocent people in the jail they too are considered accessories to the injustice when people do not rise Rise up, stand up and say that is wrong. These people too are punished for their inaction in that crime. But we all know one thing for sure. We Tamils have nothing to do with Rajiv Gandhi's murder. Someone took political advantage of a favorable situation. That is all to it and that is not for us to find out. A wife getting a husband murdered is not something new and is already recorded in the annals of history. As far as Tamils are concerned, considered, this LLRC is for the Sinhalese to justify their position to the world. It will never be an answer to us Tamils. We know who the culprits are and we know what to be done about it. It does not change in any way or even a wee bit our verdict and our future response to it. Our immediate plan is to educate our children and create that force of moral presence so that the world will begin to listen. The spectators and audiences are not ready. We are not ready. But we have to ready our future generations to make the spectators and audiences to listen and pay attention. We need to educate the Indian masses and the Sri Lankan maniacs that there is a better formula for life. Not corruption, not bribery, not racism, not fanaticism. To make them to listen, we need their critical moral mass. My appeal to the single people in Sri Lanka is I am willing to offer return flight to a few people to come and see the miracle unfolding in a nation without borders and a nation of people without a government that can still maintain their character. It is in our blood, it is in our nature and it is nurtured into our generations to come. But don't be surprised if the future generations looks quite different to the dark skinned Tamils which your tourism industry like to portray for me, for we may be your future tourists. Did you get it? We may come to visit for the best of food and the best of comfort which you serve others with gratitude. Your leaders told you Tamils were into drugs and credit card frauds. But when you read the patents filed worldwide, you will know what we have been doing. Moral justice works in strange places, in strange ways. One day you will see a tower and you may wonder where it came from. We know what we had to do to get it up there. It was the sheer hard work, determination, perseverance and our ability to do rise again and again like the mythical word phoenix. We have risen again when bankers and politicians begin to receive us with respect. There is something miraculous and a miracle has happened just in mere 25 years. Amazing isn't it? That is why the LLRC report was released to appease the Tamils and to get the piece of the pie. And they say, we are going to ask for forgiveness. But, where are our loved ones? Or, is it a plan to, dis 
You see, the plan in disguise to continue your fanatical morality mentality. Will I let will I ever let a singleist man into my home? How can I? When you have behaved when you have become a low class scum basket at the Commonwealth meeting, why did our Prime Minister walk out when the scum rise to speak? Because we Canadians are very conscious about the character of a person and the content of his character. You are a pariah nation in the face of the world community. They know, they, they are, the world knows what you do, how you talk and how you have clearly told the world we are a bunch of savages without any conscience. A community with conscience will never behave so erratically, erratically and to treat the world like garbage. If you had any morality, you would have behaved differently. It was your culture you revealed so clearly to the world. We didn't have to do a thing. We Tamils didn't have to do a thing. You did it yourself. As I always say, moral justice, the mother of legal justice, works quietly, slowly, patiently, and ultimately it will come to haunt him. The ghost of moral justice has taken over from legal justice. Remember and never forget that legal justice is only a tiny portion. And when that legal justice is, is insufficient, moral justice takes over. Daily we wake up and the man who lives by moral justice get through the day like a breeze and the man who breaks that moral justice go through the tempest. My advice to my single people is please take two minutes a day to pray to God to give you a pathway to peaceful life. My mother did it for me. I do it for my children. But Sri Lanka needs is a regime change. Thank you very much folks. That's all for the week. In the meantime, 70 million Tamils worldwide. Unite. Stay together. Work hard. And never ever give up. We are winning. And the best is yet to come. My name is Subramani Maslamani, a world class Tamil powered by conscience, powered by convictions, commitments and conscience. Thank you again.